Hey, welcome back to Off the Grid. We're going to start right where we left off in the last episode, here at our spring. Today, I'm going to tell you how we collect our water, how we store it, and how we send it down the mountain. It begins with a dam. No, not one of these. This is what our dam looks like. It's only 12 inches deep, just enough to cover an intake pipe. Now, obviously, our little dam doesn't store much water. And if you want to lug rebar and 80-pound bags of cement up the mountain, you could probably build something a little bigger. We skipped the hernia and chose Plan B. Follow me. Plan B lets your small dam gradually fill a large polyethylene tank. We sort of like this because winching a plastic tank up the mountain is much easier than lugging 40 bags of concrete. It's also practical. We don't use water all the time, but when we do, for dishes or showers or laundry, we may need a lot. Our tank holds 600 gallons. That'd be a really big dam, by the way. And our tank supplies water when we need it and fills up when we don't. So if you're thinking about a tank instead of concrete, there's a lot to choose from. But whatever you pick, make sure you have a large access hatch so you can clean it out and an overflow pipe. Well, we've talked about our tank and we've talked about our dam up the hill. Now we need to start talking about connections. Now we used two inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. And I think we used almost a thousand feet of pipe to make the run all the way down to the house. One thing you want to watch is any sharp turns, any elbows in your pipe. Those will create friction in your line and that will reduce your water pressure. Now, before we get our PVC glue out, let's revisit the dam. A stream-fed water system has got to have screens or your pipes are going to get clogged up with leaves. This one slides into our collection pipe. And look at the crud that Karen's knocking out. This is sort of a major pain in the butt every fall when we have to climb up the mountain almost every day, turn off a water valve, pull the screen, and knock out leaves. Down the hill, we've got another screen, very fine mesh, 500 microns, I think, and it traps small stuff that snucks through the first screen before it gets into the house supply. Karen just closes off a different valve, unscrews the top, and uses a toothbrush to scrub it clean. I think I mentioned the word valve twice in talking about our water system. And these little suckers are absolutely critical to maintaining and controlling your water system. Let me just take a minute and show you how we use them. Now, we have four valves in our system. One is right below the dam. One is right just above the tank, the water tank. One on the other side of the tank and one down here at the bottom of the hill. Now, the most important valve is this one right here. It's a control valve. If it's late in the summer, there's not a lot of water going into your dam, you don't want to have this valve open all the way or you'll drain your dam. You'll get air in your line, that'll cause a vapor lock, and you've got problems. So you use this valve to control the supply. It also determines how much water is going into your tank. You want a little bit dribbling out the overflow line so that when you use water, the tank can refill. When the tank is full, you return the water to, back to the groundwater system. This valve shuts the water off coming out of the dam. You need that valve if you have a break in your line here somewhere. You stop the water flow, you fix the line, you restore the, the flow. Same thing here. If you have a break down here, this line shuts the water coming out of the tank. You don't get wet when you fix the line. You fix it, you open the valve up again. This valve down here is, connect, is tied in with our other fines filter screen that we talked about. This shuts the water off, so you can access the screen, clean it out, close it, open it back up again, and restore your water supply. If you get a break in your line, you're not going to be able to use a, host, a coupling because your pipe is going to be rigid. It's going to be buried in the ground. So you're going to need one of these. It's a two-inch slip coupling, it's called, on each side. You just slide it over the pipe. Slide it over the other side so they're together. Tighten it up with a pipe wrench and Bob's your uncle. Okay, we're, we're done here. Let's 
Let's head on back down the hill. Well, that was a uh, lot of walking and talking. If you're concerned about your water, your bugs or germs, you probably should get yourself a UV light and a small carbon cartridge filter. Together, those things will take care of pretty much any problems you might have in your drinking water. In fact, now we have one right underneath our sink here. Let's see if I can show it to you. There on the left is a UV light. It uses about 10 watts of electricity. And on the right is a 0.5 micron filter. A little switch on the far right uh, turns it on and off. Well, that's it. Set it up right and you'll have plenty of water for dishes, showers, laundry, even a water fight. And if you're lucky, you just might have enough water left to power what's inside this box. Stay tuned.